Will you come to prayer with me this day? Embracing and loving God of so many names, thank you for bringing us together once again. Be with us each now as we share the true spirit of Christ within each of us. Let us be that gift to one another through your guidance, while at the same time opening our hearts this morning. But even more, open our minds so that we may be the receptors of the words that are about to be spoken. So I ask now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken, and the words that come from my mouth, along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts. Let them ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. This morning we start a new sermon series here at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. In light that we've started June as well as Pride Month, we've titled this series, Showing Our Pride, dot, dot, dot. As we venture through this month of pride, we will look at the various ways that we should be showing our pride. And this morning in our Gospel reading, we heard that there is a difference between foundations of, of strong buildings and buildings that aren't so strong. I'd actually shared this story years ago, but it's a good story to share again. But when I was a young boy, I used to love building things. And when I did, I had two favorite ways of making those creations happen. The first was my sandbox. When I was four, my father built from scratch this sandbox. It wasn't just any old sandbox, but it was created with careful precision and detail. Now the sandbox was a big sandbox, and it had that kind of sand that was thick and dense. But it was that kind of sand that you could mold easily with those plastic buckets, or back in the dark ages of my childhood, they were called metal pails. You'd have to shovel your dirt from that little shovel that you had into the pail. Now if I'm dating myself and giving my age away, oh well. But I would pack that sand so firmly in those pails and would flip them over and would create those castles and forts all throughout the sandbox. But no matter how firmly I packed that sand and how hard I tried, something always made that sand at one point or another collapse. Better yet, my term for it was falling flatter than a pancake. So my deduction with all this was, and of course through my expert construction skills, was that they stood all night and that somebody had it in for me and purposely had the automatic sprinklers aimed right for the sandbox just to destroy my handiwork. And then there was the other philosophy of having a sister who would come along thinking she was Godzilla or King Kong and would just smash them flat with her feet, terrorizing the city to nothing. Now personally, I tend to believe that my sister had it in for me and that there was always what you call Plan B, Legos. Now, dating myself again, but I know that they still make Legos because my godchildren still play with them. And I know that they get around and when you step on them, you about go through the ceiling because they go right through a piercing sound in your foot. But if you look at these Legos now, there are some mega kits like these ships and space stations and castles and these replicas of cities that you can make. Then again, maybe dating myself back to the days, you either had Legos or Lincoln Logs. And if you were really in the upper echelon, you had an erector set. Now, if you were in that middle class of society, which most people were back in that time, you basically were the cool kid on the block if you had Legos. Because Lincoln Logs were about going at a date in my era and continuing to go on with the new and greatest things of toys. Now, for those of you who date back with me, Thank you, Jesus, for all that. Legos usually came with these pieces that were flat, sometimes triangular, and if you were lucky, you had those oval and round pieces, but all these pieces were considered to be the base. So you take your Lego bricks, begin stacking them one by one, interlocking them one piece at a time until you had this awesome creation or structure. Now, back in the day and even now, those Legos came with a picture on the box along with those dreaded instructions of being of how to assemble these things. 
and you looked at, at it and it looked like a road map that was so confusing that you didn't know where point A or point Z was. And you know those instructions were more confusing or not telling you how to make their creation. Now, I'm sure you're probably already imagining, or maybe not, but I wasn't going to be tied down by following those directions. I was my own kind of guy, so I thought. And here I was, thinking I can make my own creation, so I'd look at the picture on the box, and then maybe started having second thoughts of how I was going to make this creation come alive. And the good gay man that I am, I was only going to make it bigger and better and, well, of course, more fabulous than what was on the box. Now, if I followed the directions, the building would have looked just fine. But then again, being stubborn like I am sometimes, doing it my way, that the creation would come to life bigger and better than ever before. But the main point was it was built on a strong foundation and it wasn't going to come down no matter what. So often in our lives, we balance ourselves between the sandcastles and the brick and mortar buildings. And by taking that same analogy right here within our congregation, that situation can be solid one minute like the Lego buildings and a bit unstable like a sandcastle. I want to take a moment to go back to our gospel reading this morning that we heard, but I want to read it to you in a different context that comes from the message. Now, we heard the gospel reading through the Inclusive Bible, but I want to read you this version of the, the reading. It says, Why are you so polite with me? Always saying, Yes, sir, and that's right, sir, but never doing a thing I tell you. These words I speak to you are mere additions to your life. Homeowner improvements to your standards of living, they are foundation words, words to build a life on. If you work the words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who dug deep and laid the foundation of his house on bedrock. When the river burst, it banks and crashed against the house that nothing could shake it. It was built to last. But if you just use my words and Bible studies and don't work them into your lives, you are like a dumb carpenter who built a house but skipped the foundation. When the swollen river comes crashing in, it collapsed a house of cards. It was a total loss. Now, so many of us have been in church probably longer than I have, others about the same, and for some of you, this may be your first Sunday joining us even though virtually. But when I was a child, I was taught the words to the song that went, Oh, when the rain comes down and the floods came up, Oh, when the rains came down and the floods came up, the house on the rock stood firm. Through all this, Jesus' his entire point was to show us what it looks like when someone listens to the words and takes them to the heart within their lives, rather than when someone who hears them and just ignores them and goes about their way. You see, God wants to see how important it is to have that solid foundation, not only in our lives, but the lives of others. But it's also a foundation that begins right here. And as we will shortly embark in just a few weeks on reuniting with one another in person. And you're probably wondering or even asking yourself, what is this renewed relationship or this new foundation going to look like? My answer to you is the following. We're going to continue to build on the foundation that we already have, securing it and making it even stronger than ever before. And in doing so, it will be a journey that builds upon the current foundation, not only on our structure, but on each and every individual that is connected to it. It will be done in the form of rejuvenating and renewing our vision and mission of who we are as a church. If you recall when I arrived five years ago, I said that we're going to be going to be a church that goes from being the best kept secret to the, oh yes, we now know who they are. Look at that thing. Look at the great things that Milwaukee MCC is doing. 
not only in the life of this congregation, but in the life of our community. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, that rebuilding, or what I like to call it building upon, isn't going to be easy. Just ask David, who has been tirelessly working over the last 14 months to make this project of this building, the reconstruction, the repairs, to rejuvenate it to a building that will be like nothing we've ever had before. But it's something that isn't all done just by me, your pastor, or the board of directors, or any of the lay ministers but it's going to take the efforts of each and every one of us here, even the ones who have yet to know who we are. Now this year we celebrate 50 years of being the church who changed society of how the LGBTQI community was viewed. We did this by sharing our stories and sharing our experiences and now as we return after being gone for nearly 15 months, I want to hear your stories again. I want to hear how and what makes you keep being a part of this church and what you, yes you, see as us as a congregation going forward, starting fresh and new. What is your vision? I want to hear about the past and even if it's not good, but I want to hear about our legacies, even our achievements that we have occurred. But I don't want us to compare any of this. While our legacies and achievements are good things and have been good things from the past, we need to leave them behind. We need to start moving towards a more better environment. Now more than ever, we need to leave them behind and move towards the new legacies and achievements that we are about to create. We are the people of the present. Now, I have one philosophy when it comes to sharing our visions and ideas is that we just don't come up to me or the board and say, hey, here's my vision or my idea. Now take it and go run with it. I said this five years ago and I say it still to this day. While it's all fine and dandy, I'm sure that we are well aware that it just doesn't roll that way. I'm the kind of pastor that loves to hear your visions and ideas for the, for the growth and for who we are. But at the same time, I like it even better that when you come with that vision, that you come with a plan that goes with that idea. Now, don't get me wrong. As I said before, that when I became your pastors, if you come to me or the board with that vision or idea, that the solution has to be the solution. But that solution doesn't have to be that you have to take it on single-handedly to make it happen. A reminder that we are all in this together. Remember, it takes a village to move the mountain, and as that village, we move the mountain and that vision together. I want us to set some forth some new challenges, not only from you, but also from me and the board. One of those is the first is our financial gifts to the church. Now, this isn't a plea for stewardship or a financial gain, but it's a reminder of our responsibilities as Christians to uphold our commitments that we have and that we will make. It's our commitments as we make the betterment of our church. I know as church attenders that the last thing that we want to hear is that the church wants more money from you. But it's a reminder to uphold those tithing commitments that you've made at the beginning of the year. It's also a reminder that while we are just here, that it is not just to share our treasures, but it's to share our time and our talents amongst those within the congregation. And this just isn't a challenge for you, but it's for a challenge for me as well. You know, the best sermons that are given are given by the preacher who gives them. I remind you that from the very start, I've said that I don't care whether you give a small amount, a large amount, or a humongous amount. But it's that difference that comes from you as well, not only from your treasures, but by your time and your talent that goes with it. In order for us to rebuild and to flourish along with everything we have upon us, we all need to start making it a practice to re-engage in the life of this congregation in whichever way you see fit. This is what builds the foundation. This is what puts the strength in the foundation. 
This is what makes the foundation the best and the strongest building around. Fifteen months ago, after our break-in and vandalism and damage that was caused, we did just that. We started rebuilding. This building was pretty much taken back to its original studs, allowing us to rebuild, to rejuvenate, and to make this building stand on its foundation stronger than it ever has, and stronger for the next 50 years or more. I invite you to join me as we begin rebuilding and re-strengthening, or what I call us as a vibrant, progressive, and a inclusive community of faith something that can be bigger and stronger than ever before. I invite you to join the bandwagon, engage, do whatever it takes, whether it's small or big, but we need to continue with one another as we come back. Take a moment and hear these words from Isaiah. I don't think the way you think, the way work isn't the way I work. For as the sky soars high above earth, so that way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. Just as rain and snow descend from the sky and don't go back until they've watered the earth, doing their work of making things grow and blossom, producing seed for farmers and food for the hungry, so will the words that come out of my mouth and not back empty-handed. They'll do the work I sent them out to do, they'll complete the assignment that has been given. So in order to make this happen, it requires prayers from each of us. Our prayers are essential in building our foundation and most of all, a solid foundation. Pray diligently. Stay alert with your eyes wide open in gratitude. Don't forget to pray for us, that God will open the doors telling us of the mystery of Christ even while we are locked up. Pray that every time we open our mouths that we'll be able to make Christ plain as day for each of us. Don't fret, don't worry, but instead of worrying, pray and let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for God, will come and settle down. It's a wonderful thing that happens when Christ displays a worry at the center of your life. So in other words, when we talk the talk, we need to walk the walk. As we return to in-person worship in just a few weeks, let us come back with our open hearts and our open minds and our desire to bring this community of faith back together in reunion while at the same time going out into the world and being the one who brings others to Christ with us. We need to strive to talk the talk, but when we do that, we need to follow through with walking our walk, your pastor and your board included. As we move forward during this month of June, let us remember that June, which was designated to be Pride Month, that it is only not the month of June to do that, but we should be showing our pride each and every day, taking our pride into the world and our pride of who we are as individuals. So as we go through the next few weeks, as we go out into the world showing our pride of who we are, I bring blessings upon you this day, Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. Amen.